So what uh, I wanted to do today um, to start out, and, and there was a request that we go back over forms again, and, and I'll, I'll do that um, uh, towards the end to discuss those a little bit. But I, I just jotted down some thoughts about surviving in the market, et cetera. And uh, it's just because we're practicing social distance does not mean social isolation. It's important now that you really become a real estate consultant. Um, I want to talk to you about what your value proposition is in this time of uncertainty and confusion. Uh, what added value do you bring to the table for your clients while at the same time trying to survive yourself? So what I want to share with you first uh, is some surveys done by the Virginia Association of Realtors. Uh, and they've been doing this over a series of, of weeks, but March 20th, uh, one out of five um, real estate agents said that this had no effect on how they do business, um, which means about 80% are being affected about how you do business. The most common issue um, was buyers deciding to delay their purchasing of a home. Uh, back in March, it was uh, March 20th, it was 56.3%. Uh, on the seller side, 25.6% uh, said at least one seller canceled their listing. And one out of 10 had a seller remove their listing completely from the market, which I can understand. Uh, just don't want people in their, you know, in their property. Um, the safety of their family. Uh, at the same time, 40% of the members said they had to postpone bringing new listings to the market. Now that was back in, in March. Uh, in April, um, the fourth time they conducted this, April 10th, um, everybody's noticing that uh, the price effect in Virginia has been smaller than the rest of the country. Only about 12% of the uh, realtors that they interviewed said that they had to reduce the price of the seller's house, whereas nationally it's 28%. Um, few sellers are reducing their prices in Northern Virginia. About 29% said they have potential buyers, though, who expected lower prices. Um, I was looking to buy a condo, uh, still maybe, uh, five, about four or five weeks ago, and I had the choice of five properties and that was it. Uh, when I went online and checked now there's like 35. So to me, uh, that would indicate I'm gonna probably try to negotiate on price. But the biggest impact is uh, buyers, you know, still 51% of the buyers said they're not going to uh, go out looking right now. Um, they also asked what was affecting the agents and here's what they came up with. Uh, when it comes to military buyers, military's pretty much just halted everything. They're not they're not moving people around right now, so that's that's causing some problems. Uh, in my class for brokers yesterday, um, or actually on uh, not yesterday but Wednesday, um, we discussed. Well, we're still getting multiple offers on properties that are uh, in the six hundred thousand dollar price range, and and I agree. Um, People will buy those maybe sight unseen, but when you get up into the higher priced luxury homes, um, we're, we're starting to see, uh, we already were experiencing a, a slowdown, but it's really slowing down. The appraisals. Uh, I don't know if any of you've had this effect yet, but some of the appraisers are coming in lower on their appraisals simply because um, they're thinking the COVID's gonna affect prices in the future. Um, financing. I uh, discussed this with Johanna yesterday. When you're filling out your financing contingencies um, to try to try to get a lender to give you financing contingency in 20 days or 21 days, almost impossible. Um, they're worried about people losing their jobs and more people are losing jobs, lower hours, et cetera. So they are doing a, a second uh, verification the day of settlement to make sure that people still have uh, a job. So uh, you gotta be careful with your financing contingencies. Uh, some of the 
responses to the VAR were um, uh, pre-approvals uh, no longer pre-approved. Uh, FHA mortgages have stronger guideline changes, et cetera. So one of the things that we can do to bring some value is to be the real estate consultant and help out with uh, what to expect in the future. So I, when I was putting this together, I, I started thinking about what some of my favorite authors uh, have taught me over the years, uh, Dyer, Covey, Carnegie, a slew of others. And this is one thing that I, I have come up with for sure. Every morning, I need to take a look at the day ahead and ask myself two questions. And these are the questions I ask myself every day at 4.44 in the morning. You guys know I'm an early riser. What can I do today that I have control over? And what can I not control? Um, the decision is mine. I choose to focus only on what I can control and not be paralyzed by the things I cannot control. So think about your personal life right now. What can you control? Um, I can control uh, if I was still safe in this environment. Uh, I choose not to go out into it any more than I need to, which means to go play golf uh, into the store. Um, Am I going to be a couch potato or am I going to exercise? I've actually this worked out for me. I've started a exercise routine in our little uh, condo exercise room uh, where I work out every other day for an hour. So at 72, I'm seeing some real benefit from that. So I can, I can choose to control that. Um, I can control my health. I can feed my soul and nourish my body properly and not get into the junk food and end up weighing 400 pounds when I come out of this. But the biggest one, I'm in control of my attitude. You guys have known me for, for quite a while now. And, you know, if you ever ask me how I am, it's always excellent. I, I'm in control of that, okay? But when it comes to our business life, okay, this is, this is the, where you have to take advantage of this time. You need to get back to the basics, okay? You need to contact your sphere of influence with positive reinforcement. They don't, they don't want to hear what they're listening to on TV. Matter of fact, I don't even turn it on. I'm tired of hearing all the negativity. I want to hear the good part. And work on your lead generation systems. So this is something that I put together before, but I want to share it with you. Uh, planning out life. Uh, plan it out one time. It's easier as you go down the road. Uh, you develop your niche. What are, what are you really good at? What part of the market? But create consistent marketing. Consistent marketing. Your brand, even, even today, uh, your brand. Uh, years ago when I was with Merrill Lynch uh, Realty, I had, I had a brand and it, and it went like this. It said a little bit of Larry and it had a picture of me and a whole lot of bull and had the Merrill Lynch bowl will get your home sold. So a little bit of Larry, a whole lot of bull will get your home sold. And that was, you know, people remember that even today. And that's 20 years ago or more, 30 years ago now. I still have past clients that, that remember that. Merrill Lynch made me stop using it. said it didn't give the proper image of their company. But I said, hey, you chose the bull, you know, not me. So, um, but then be willing to contribute to consistency consistency okay whether it's flyers videos etc consistency um if you uh go to go to uh stephen covey's uh four quadrants of time management planning tool i encourage you to to take a look at that uh, you can google it you'll find it but Covey's, um, Covey's broken our life down into four quadrants, urgent and important, not urgent and important, not important, not urgent, uh, and urgent and not, and, uh, not important. So um, we're urgent, important is the coronavirus. I mean, we have to take care of these medical emergencies. But where you need to face, where you need to spend your time is in quadrant two, focus. And his quadrant two talks about uh, planning, 
prevention, value clarification, exercise, those things not urgent but important are the, the most important part of all of this because it will um, uh, lead you into uh, developing right now leads. And if you can't get out and do anything else, you need to be setting yourself up for your pipeline for leads in the future. Uh, work on your lead generation systems. Uh, my property minder is the one that I use. I don't know what systems you use, but I use property minder and we're, we're getting in there and starting to refresh some of the stuff in that site. Um, but you need to think about your approach to getting hired. And when it comes to approach to getting hired, uh, you have to have a plan as to what the goal of the call is or the email or or the Facebook or whatever you're going to use um, and have your resources available. Right now is the perfect time for you to develop a video about you and, and your system. You can do this on YouTube or whatever way you want to do it. And if you're going to introduce yourself to someone today, understand you're interrupting them, even though they have nothing else to do and they're getting tired of watching TV. So when you call or contact, disclose your intention. You want to in introduce yourself as their new expert. You want to send them some free information. What kind of information? Well, we'll discuss that here in a few minutes. Um, be brief and be gone. Um, express yourself. You should be able to express yourself in 10 seconds or less. Um, there was this sheriff um, in Chicago that was out doing a seminar in a community why you should own a gun and one of the people stood up and you know being smart and said well why should we own a gun and he said he said uh, because when you need us we get there in minutes okay uh, minutes are, are seems like a short period of time but you've already been dead uh, so they asked the organizer why and the organizer said, it's, you know, a gun is lighter, lighter to carry around than a police officer. Get to the point, 10 seconds or less, practice it. If we were in an elevator, what's your elevator speech? But this is one that I really want you to concentrate on. Have a media kit ready to go that you can send in an email while you're talking to them. What well, would be in a, in a media kit? Well, one, uh, an introduction about yourself. Uh, I have an e-portfolio. My son is restructuring it right now as part of me uh, taking advantage of this, this uh, confinement time. Um, but my e-portfolio is all about me, my favorite poem, uh, my family, all that type of stuff. So get your intro and your bio together, your credentials. Um, you guys all know I have several lines of credentials, but uh, now's a perfect time to start taking advantage of some of this uh, uh, internet um, courses. Client testimonials, your contact information, and a video. Uh, they should see you in action. Okay? They really should see you in action. So now's a good time to check in with your friends, family, neighbors, clients, virtually, of course. Uh, if nothing else, just to see how they are doing. Check in. Uh, counsel on preparing to sell or buy. You are their research, real estate resource. Now's a good time for them to be understanding. Um, share NVAR stats. You know, share some NVAR stats. Um, uh, Michael Sobe uh, has done an excellent job with this. I, I saw his post uh, just the other day. Uh, in the, his spheres where he markets tell people what the stats are. They're available for you there at NVAR. Um, and be, be more diligent in answering text, emails, calls. Get back to people right away. Um, expand your digital offerings. Expand your digital offerings. Uh, your virtual tours, we know now virtual tours are, are really prominent and uh, uh, we have a real resource there with Nestor uh, who can help you uh, with these uh, tours. I think he, Nestor goes out and even does tours for you if you pay him, I guess. 
um, targeted Facebook ads. Um, I use this one uh, whenever I get a new listing. Uh, you can pay money in your targeted Facebook ads and and uh, draw. If you don't have a Facebook page for your for your business, set one up. Uh, virtual staging. These are all types of um, things that we can be doing now uh, to develop our lead sources in the future. Now, there's two types of marketing uh, that I talk about. Um, one is marketing to agents and one is marketing to buyers. Uh, when you list a property in the MLS and you, you take and you put um, a remark section, I don't know what you guys see in remark sections, but here's what I see. Uh, stainless steel appliances, uh, whatever that countertop stuff they call, um, sun-filled family rooms, et cetera. Now, how many people do you know go online and start a search for stainless steel appliances? So one of the things I want to encourage you to do, if you have listings, do an individual property site, buy, buy the rights to that, that uh, street address or, and uh, GoDaddy or wherever, develop a single property website and use Google AdWords, okay? Uh, find out the most searched words that people use. If you want to try to drum up business and people are doing a lot of online searches now, they, they're not going to find you by stainless steel appliances. But get, let's start working on some of these single property websites uh, and use Google AdWords. Uh, that's most used words in the search engines and use those in your single property website. Drive these people to you. Now, I, when I'm looking at uh, marketing now, uh, market to lifestyles. You know, don't, when, when you create descriptions that jump off the page at people, uh, uh, you need to appeal to the buyer's emotions. Use keywords that paint a picture. Uh, it's not just about telling the facts of the property, that's important, but um, things like sounds of kids, bad time stories, or smell the sizzle of the steak. Uh, give us some pizzazz, okay? Uh, you should probably also pick up your own YouTube video channel that doesn't cost you any money. These are the type of things you can do to uh, increase your your presence out there. Uh, so it's time to master virtual real estate. Uh, whether it's going to be listing appointments, buyer consult consultations, or walkthroughs, or virtual showings, uh, we need to study, practice, and role play with this stuff. Uh, if you would have told me uh, a month ago that I'd be doing Zoom presentations, uh, I would have thought you were crazy because I, I hate computers, but um, it's the new norm. So I've had to do it. Nestor has been excellent in leading me through this. There's still things that I need to learn with it, but at least I can get on here. And I'm now presenting all my kind, all my classes for NVAR, all the continuing ed, et cetera. We're doing the same way, but not on Zoom, go to meeting, which is not as friendly as this. I also want you uh, to think about your social media presence. Uh, keep engaged with your social media accounts. I, I have Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, with, and uh, several others, but I'd never really been keeping up with them. Now, it, uh, I am keeping up with them. People are contacting me through there. Um, with the Facebook content you put out there, they might even ask questions and want that. So keep engaged with your social media accounts. Um, e-newsletter. I encourage you, if you don't have an e-newsletter, to start about it, to think about it. And some of the things you might want to put in there now would be promote the uh, CDC guidelines, refer them to different sites, um, how the virus impacts mortgage payments. Uh, for instance, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, if the people's loan is ba backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they now have a three-month forbearance where they'll, you know, they'll forgive the payment and add it to the back end of the mortgage for three months to give people a break. Or the property values, RPR reports, all these things are out there for you to 
to um, take and uh, run with uh, or preparing your home for showing. Uh, if some people still want to let people in their house, what would you do in this environment to prepare your house? Well, I'd be telling my clients, you turn on all the lights. You open up all the closets, doors, cabinets. You minimize surfaces that have to be touched because you don't want people coming in there and, and going touching everything in your home. And those are just some of the thoughts that I jotted down here um, for you to take into consideration. I'm throwing a lot of stuff out there. I'm hoping that you'll take some time and, and do some research and, and uh, incorporate some of this stuff or ask resources uh, such as Nestor or other people out there that are better at this than I am. But uh, um, I'm, I'm incorporating it all into what I do now. Any questions about any of that stuff? Okay, we were, you know, I was asked to go over these forms again. And, uh, you know, I still haven't figured out how you download them. But the forms that we went over last week, if you, if you have them, we'll pull them out. First one, I'll hold it up here. Uh, listing information for making offers, optional. This is an optional form. This is a new form put out by NVAR. Uh, I was online with the board's attorney. Uh, he spoke in my broker CE class. And I really loved uh, this form. And I let him know I think the committee did an excellent job. It starts out with this form does not constitute a disclosure or offer. It shall not become part of any residential sales contract. The information is provided for the sole purpose of assisting cooperating agents in preparing offers. Sellers make no representations or warranties regarding the accuracy or information contained in this information sheet. This form is simply for the listing agent to make it easier to get complete contracts in without a bunch of blanks, without having to go back and forth, without having to have a bunch of phone calls, etc. So there's always two things that I've always recommended that Fairfax Realty agents um, call and ask for sure. And that is the answer to paragraph 6A, seller's name and a preferred mailing address or facts where they decide they want to receive everything. And FERTA, paragraph 14, is this a foreign exchange or not? But it goes on, it also asked if it's a 1031 exchange. Uh, I never thought I'd see this in my, my lifetime, but the government's actually given extension times for 1031 exchange, which before it was a drop dead and would not happen. But uh, the virus has even changed that. But property information section, uh, tax map ID, all that type of stuff. When it comes to parking spaces, I want to encourage you as an agent, as a listing agent, contact the association or the condo, ask if this is a limited common element, if it's a deeded or an assigned parking place. In the old condos, you actually bought your condo space and got a deed to that, and you bought your parking space and you got a deed to that, so you literally could sell it. The newer condos, limited common elements, uh, you have the right to use the space, but you never actually own it. And we have had situations where people have um, sold their their parking spaces to someone when they only had a right to use it, and it won't show up in the uh, title search unless you do the fancy title search. So at that point, uh, when one party's parking in the space and the other one that owns it uh, comes, you know, by purchase comes and they start getting in an argument. Now we have a lawsuit. You don't want to end up there. So find out if it's a common element or if it's actually deeded. Utility information is always great. Um, and then um, conveyances, this matches up with the contract. You check yes or no and the number, you download it into your listing on, the, on Bright and the 
buyer agent has the information and we don't end up with a disagreement in the future. We did have a case uh, this past year that people called me on. The fuel tanks leased or owned and the seller had checked they owned it and they were only leased and the buyer found out afterwards and they wanted to sue for all kinds of damages even though the seller agreed to work out with the company to buy it whatever so double check it listing information brokers listing information that is required uh, by statute by the federal law um, so we need to have all that information on there other information seller preferred settlement timing post occupancy other preferences or requests you can your seller cannot your seller cannot demand as part of the contract that the buyer uses their title company it is against the law in virginia real estate settlement agents act you can highly recommend you can suggest you can prefer and you know we prefer here at uh, fairfax realty if all possible uh, get your buyers to to use our title company rts they are excellent title company and uh, you're supporting the company to help the company through these these hard times and i know the buyer has choices and you may have had other uh, people you've used that you prefer over the time but I can guarantee you they're going to get great service with RTS. So please, uh, please uh, see if you can get your clients to, to use them. Can't say must, but we hopefully will prefer. Any questions about that form? And it's not to be made part of the contract. You can't say, make this an addendum to the contract. It's only for informational purposes only, and the seller is not guaranteeing anything. Okay. The next one, buyer's acknowledgement, okay, of potential adverse consequences. This form hadn't been revised since 2005, uh, and it needed it drastically. This is the form that I call against my uh, buyer's agent's objection. Uh, that's how I used to state it above my buyer, buyer agent's objection. I have decided to remove the following clauses from my sales contract. So this form says the buyer you know, is submitting an offer. Certain contract provisions may be waived or not utilized, some of which are referenced below. And buyer's decision regarding these and other contract terms may lead to potentially adverse consequences. And the buyer is advised to seek legal advice because as a buyer's agent, I should be recommending that all of these be in their contract, not remove any. But if they, so my mind went on to say, to uh, be competitive in today's marketplace, they have decided to remove the following clauses. Conventional, FHA, VA, financing contingencies, uh, the appraisal contingency. You know FHA and VA does not allow the removal of the financing contingency. That would be against the law. Uh, the buyer always has the right to get out for that, that reason. Uh, radon testing contingency, well water, you can read through those and you can, whatever others come up, good form, protect yourself. Once again, not part of the contract. It's just for discussion and disclosure purposes to make sure you remember to go over all this. We have a new form called listing amendment, okay? listing agreement amendment the reason they did this is that the old form um, had withdrawn and withdrawn meant no longer had a listing but that doesn't match up with bright mls categories uh, withdrawn on, in bright the listing agent still has a listing it's just not in the system. So you cannot, at that point, you cannot uh, call and try to list that property. You can't contact and negotiate with that party. They still have uh, a listing, okay? So they had to uh, change the form, but this form uh, is an amendment to your existing 
uh, listing. It, the purpose of the amendment is not to modify certain provisions. Uh, it, I mean, to modify certain provisions, but it does not change any others. They all remain in full force and effect. So some of the things you could change, the listing price or extend the listing period, or a broker shall re-enter the listing into the MLS or temporarily off the market. Now, coming soon, and I'll discuss that in detail in, in another session. But coming soon, um, we have the clear cooperation policy from NAR and any realtor, okay, and that's the key, realtor, uh, any advertising whatsoever, that listing has to be into the system within one day, okay? And in your listing agreement, the seller has agreed to that. So I want you to, to uh, uh, we had this discussion in the broker class the other day. Um, you could put it on for for a day, and then um, you could put it in temporarily off the market if the seller doesn't want anybody else showing their property. And you can leave it in temporarily off the market for any length of time. Um, but if you put it into the system under coming soon, it can't be shown. Uh, by anybody, not even you, during that coming soon period. So you can always put it into the system uh, for a day, have some showings, uh, temporarily off the market. It's up to the owner at that point. But we'll discuss that in greater detail um, in another session. This one's an important one, um, COVID-19 addendum. COVID-19 addendum. We, uh, we're, in a, we're in times that we have not seen before. Uh, we, have, we are having some unforeseeable events. What, what has happened is that contracts, people are already under contract, losing jobs, et cetera, had already moved financing contingencies or didn't even have one in their contract. Uh, and now they just went out of the contract. Uh, there was a little section of the law that hasn't really been tried here too much in Virginia that said impossibility. Um, you know, um, I, I'm not sure I'd want to try to go to court under impossibility to prove that. So they came up with this form, buyer and seller acknowledged the coronavirus pandemic may have unforeseeable and indefinite impacts on real estate transactions. Well, contracts that were approved before the, uh, the March when we had this uh, pandemic rise um, could, might be able to say unforeseeable event, but I can't see how anybody doesn't know what's going on right now. Uh, so to me, it's not an uh, uh, you know, unforeseeable impact. We can see the impacts, but this addendum is designed to protect the parties from default. Uh, because we have paragraph 35 or so in our contract that says um, time is of the essence. And it says you must settle by midnight on the day of settlement. Well, there's no longer a contract. It no longer exists. And if it was the buyer's fault, because paragraph 28 says, if the buyer defaults for any reason other than a default by the seller, they're in default. So now the buyer could, I mean, seller could go back after damages. So what this form does is it acknowledges that some of these events might come up and if we can't settle, okay, then the seller, the buyer would not be in default in the event they're unable to perform due to circumstances beyond their control. So if you have a buyer and you're not sure, you know, and the financing dries up, et cetera, but they didn't protect themselves by using this form, they would still probably be in default unless you could go to court and prove uh, an unforeseeable event that, that presents an impossibility to, to settle the property, okay? You can use this addendum up front with our new contracts, I highly recommend it. Uh, or 
under paragraph three and four, you could try to take an, an extend deadlines for an existing contract. So uh, one and two, you, you put into play. Uh, unforeseeable event means any event or circumstance beyond parties' reasonable control that causes performance to become impossible or impracticable. We're finding ways of working around everything now. So impracticability uh, is kind of tough. This is not a get out of jail free form. Okay. This is uh, um, a form that if it absolutely became impossible, it wouldn't be a default. But if there's other ways of doing it, virtual walkthroughs or, or you know, virtual settlements, et cetera, then uh, you're going to have a hard time just walking away from a contract. Uh, it does say that it's not a default if it's out of their control. But uh, paragraph three and four, you can do, do general settlement date and deadline extensions. All deadlines under this contract, including settlement date, are extended by 30, 60 days. How many days is it going to take to clear this up? I have no clue. Uh, specific extensions. Uh, you can just choose which one you want extended. You can extend all days or number four, specific. Uh, I encourage you to take some time to review these forms. I may do a couple sessions next week. I may log on Wednesday simply for an Ask Larry. And not to teach anything, but simply to ask questions and go back and visit the stuff that you need. Uh, we also have forms now for request of um, uh, the rent uh, to be redu reduced because of economic hardship. I'm going to hold off and do those uh, when I, because I want to talk about some other stuff with leases in another section. But right now, if the tenant lost their job a reduction of hours uh, to try to go to court in Fairfax County and get someone evicted you might as well just hang that up that's not going to happen so there might be a good reason for a, a, a landlord to want to try to negotiate and and uh, work with this stuff I know I'm trying to work on the lease on my uh, my apartment that I rent in Fairfax so that I don't have to go back and forth it expires here uh, end of April and I, I can't get anybody on the phone to tell me what the new rent would be or a new lease or et cetera. So it gets kind of frustrating. Any questions? Johanna, anything you want to add today? I, I encourage Larry, you. may I ask a question? Sure. Um, at this time, the seller can stay at home by their request when they have a visitor and they have uh, listed their house? Sure, they can stay home. I, I mm -hmm. would encourage uh, social distancing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, and, uh, um, you know, to protect themselves, maybe, you know, mask and gloves. You know, I had the question, can, uh, can the agent re uh, request that they have to be there for the showing? Uh, yes, <clears throat> uh, and they can request if the seller puts it in writing uh, that mm -hmm. I meet you, your buyer, and you have to wear mask, gloves, and even uh, booties. Uh, and uh, so I will sanitize everything before you go in. And I will be there to sanitize everything when you leave. So, I mean, these are, these are different, unprecedented times. I know there's some forms out there people are using to say that we're not responsible if you come in, et cetera. Uh, I'm not sure that that would hold up in court, but uh, how would anybody prove where they got the virus anyway? And we have a clause in our, in our listing agreement to hold harmless for injuries and et cetera. So I think that would come under an injury. Sure, they can be there. Oh, Part thanks. of the problem we're running into is appraisers and whatever. You know, not all appraisers want to go out in this. So mm -hmm. I think Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac may even have, um, you know, waiver of you know the appraiser having to go into the property if there's enough appraisal information out there about a particular subdivision and the, and there is a form already for this where 
sometimes the appraisal is just waived by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Uh, you may see that. The problem is, how do you uh, then account for anything that the owner's done that might have value? So I encourage you to still do an RPR report and get to the appraisers, uh, an appraisal package uh, that you can have in the property for the appraiser if they're coming, or you can email to an appraiser. And in there would be copies of like the plat and uh, any amenities in the neighborhood. Um, Karen and I had a listing that actually had the rights to use a boat dock and that was some value because people, you know, that community had boats. So um, don't, 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 don't uh, just leave it lay out there where you hope the appraiser appraises. You can do things to increase the odds. I have a question. Okay. Uh, with uh, current circumstances, are we allowed to request proof that uh, the tenants are no longer employed? Yes. And that would be uh, um, a new form that NVAR came out with. It's called request, and you can, this is form number uh, K 1387, uh, request due to the hardship. And part of that form is attached supporting documentation um, for the request. So you can ask for proof of furlough, unemployment, amount of unemployment assistance, statement of income, assets, liabilities. Uh, there's, so it's a pretty detailed form. Um, and then um, Virginia Realtors also has one, but the um, NVAR took it a step further. They have a form that says uh, uh, notice you answer uh, where they, own, they, they could actually deny the request because it wasn't enough evidence produced or whatever. Um, but just be careful to try to go and evict somebody now, right now, um, I don't think it's going to happen. Some, some jurisdictions and states have even said stop, they stopped all foreclosures and evictions. So probably try to work with them. But you can require... Uh, that information, yes. Okay, based on the, this is Iman Aish, I logged in through my daughter account, but um, uh, my second question is, with the new stimulus, the government going to approve, uh, they gonna give everybody uh, like 2,400, so the married couple will have like 4,800 and $500 for each child. No, they, they each get 1,200, they wouldn't get 2,400 each. So they get 2,400 total plus 500 for each kid. But that's also based on income. I got my stimulus check and I, I didn't get 1,200. I got a lot less. Okay, you're rich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got some. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Before the pandemic, you get nothing. It's good for some people, actually. Uh, my second question was the new uh, guidelines uh, President Trump uh, trying to work out with the governors to have people go back to work gradually. Uh, how is this going to, like, um, apply to us? Like, how, how soon can we go back to the office and... Uh, um, uh, classes like an, at NVR and on um, different locations. Okay, so what, what has happened? We are not technically an essential business, okay? And a lot of people think we, we are essential, but we weren't declared essential. We are declared professional. We're allowed to work as long as we practice social distancing, okay? But uh, in my opinion about things opening up, uh, in, well, I'm, I'm in Daytona Beach, so we've had a little bit different situation. We're, we're in, you know, social distancing, but um, we can still go to the beach and stuff like that. But to get a haircut, no. Uh, I, uh, Betty told me her hairdresser called and said, May 1st, she's opening up. Um, they're going to open it up, but I'm not sure that I'd want to be. No, uh, your hair looks good like that. Don't go, Larry. You like, you like that? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a ponytail here pretty soon. Uh, but, uh, Mary, I can trim your hair for free. Uh, no, but I'm in, that was the I'm same in, issue. It's not, it's not about the money. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Daytona Beach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this reminds me, I'm getting back to my, my 
time in the 1960s. I'm starting to feel young again here with this <laughs> hair, except for it wasn't white back then. Um, so I, I don't think we're going to see too many people um, opening up. Uh, I'm not sure that the, our offices would open up uh, yet. If they do, uh, it would be uh, social distancing. Uh, quite frankly, the governor of uh, Virginia said, what, June 10th? Yeah. Uh, so um, right now the board told, called and told me that, that we're definitely going to do our classes online through May and possibly June. So I think it's going to be a while. But since we're, we're declared not essential, you can still go out and show houses and do that, but uh, uh, social distancing. So if you try to hold an open house, you know, and I recommend that all open houses be canceled, uh, physical open houses, because how are you going to practice? You have a listing for $650,000 in Fairfax County. You, you still have a bunch of people out there looking. And how did you practice social distancing? So, I mean, I go to the grocery store here. They have arrows now, one-way aisles, you know. And people are getting people will get in your face if you're going the wrong way. So I just walk backwards down the aisle. Uh, so they don't know if I'm going forward or backwards because I'm not going to go all the way back around. But so it's going to be a while. Uh, so that's why I'm I'm encouraging you. And even after this is over, when we come out on the other side, this you need to do some of this social media marketing and get used to it. I mean, it, it was new to me, but I do have my Facebook and I do have my my Twitter and all that stuff. And and uh, I'm starting to start. I'm starting to incorporate it again in my marketing plan. Sort of went by the wayside. Hey, Larry, I have a question. I'm Maribel. How are you doing, Larry? I'm excellent. And you? Fine. Thank you. But Larry, I can still play golf and go to the pool and everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Larry. My question is, I have a buyer that void the contract uh, for the HOA packet without uh -huh. receiving the packet. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, because the, she bought the contract one day after the, the ratification, no? Uh, yeah. The listing agent is say they don't going to give us the EMD and she wants them, the budget pay for the uh, home inspection because she didn't do that, yeah? And I say, oh my God, did she have the right to buy the contract? without receive the packet, no? This is the yes. right the budget it's has. Like, you know, the statute says up until you receive it or a notice of non-availability. So, yeah. 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 So, okay. uh, actually, uh, one of the future sessions we'll talk about are changes to the laws that are coming into effect uh, July 1st, and one of them will be uh, by contract you can extend that three-day right of rescission to seven days after you receive it, but everybody would have to agree to it in writing. So, uh, and they're also adding to the uh, fair housing in Virginia will now include sexual orientation, gender identity, uh, veteran status, uh, and source of funds. So we're gonna have some big changes coming up here July 1st. So you will no longer be, you will no longer be able to say no VA loans. Yes. Okay, in this case, I need to escalate the, my file to my broker, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yes, my second question is, I have another buyer that uh, uh, he went to his lender, the lender gave, gave him a qualification, a pre-approval letter, and we write an offer, and then we have a contract, and then the lender, one or one week after, they say the buyer... Uh, the, the buyers don't qualify for the loan uh, because they, after review all the papers, uh, they don't qualify. And uh, yesterday I talked with one of my lenders and they say yes, they can qualify if they they check and they say they I can qualify them for the for the loan. And right now the H, the home inspection is expired because my client. Uh, didn't want to do that because they received the, the call from the loan before from the loan officer, no? And and I I want to call the listing agent and explain that we have a new lender that qualify my clients. I need to extend the, um, the financial contingency uh, or I need to cancel that contract or say, because it's gonna be a, a different lender, no? I don't want to, you know? Yeah, you need, because 
you know, paragraph two of the sales contract says your buyer has seven days to contact the lender. And then once they do, that becomes the lender. So to change, uh, you need written permission under the financial addendum of all parties to change. So, you know, tell them, you know, request that. Uh, and that's why this, uh, uh, addendum, this uh, COVID addendum can help out some too. But since they're already under contract, yeah, if they're going to change lenders, you need to protect yourself in case the new lender can't do it. Okay. Okay. So you, so you would you would actually get an addendum to the contract, uh, changing the lender, um, you know, so that if anything happened in the future, they could still get out. Yeah, we have the the COVID addendum on the contract, but I'm uh -huh. going to use to extend the settlement date. But I need the the sign an addendum, the seller sign an addendum that say the sellers mm -hmm. agree that the budget change switches the lender. No. Yeah. Yeah, do that because that way it protects them. Okay. I have a question regarding the same topic since uh, uh, there is uncertainty with what's going on now, employment and all of that. Uh, should she uh, request a denial letter from the first lender who said, the, uh, you know, he can't do the loan just in case, you know? Absolutely. It should have the rejection letter and it should not be from the lender. It should be from the underwriter. Okay. So, you know, to protect yourself. Did you hear that, Mary Bell? That was a good point. Do yeah. you have the let? Do you have the letter? The uh, letter the, of rejection. The lender, the lender is a uh, say because uh, I don't want to because it's a uh, uh, the lender say they need a special process inside of his bank that need to wait. Maybe there are two ways waiting for that letter. Yeah, I let yeah. The, the listing agent know. I don't know. This lender say that they they gonna they gonna deny the loan, but it's not the loan officer. They have a special you know, uh, processing his bank and you need to wait for the letter. She tells me and say, uh, yesterday I called her and let her know that uh, my client is visiting one of my lenders that I'm pretty sure is really good. Uh, is gonna check if they can do the loan. And last night the loan officer say, okay, I can do the loan. I need maybe one more week to close. And yeah, I'm gonna talk with her after finish. Yeah, so so you also want to make sure you get an extension of the settlement date yeah. along with the, the new lender. Okay. So that's where, that's where you would use that COVID form and request uh, an extension of the settlement date and uh, um, actually yeah. financing and settlement. So you can use the COVID form for that. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Lavi. Okay. Yosra, do you have Roma? You have your hand up. I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, okay. That 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 was me, Imanish. Okay. I, okay. okay. So we we took care of your hand, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> when is your next class, Larry? Well, we're gonna set it up, but uh, I'm thinking next Friday for sure at eleven. Johanna, is that good? Okay. Not not, 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 not this Friday. Not tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow because I'm teaching for the board Friday and Saturday, but the uh, we would do uh, what is next Friday? May first? Yeah. Okay. So May first? Yes. Yeah, May first will be fine at eleven o'clock, and we'll send the emails. I just wanted a clarification of something that lenders are saying that if you cannot make your mortgage payment, they will allow you to be three months and they will put it at the end of the loan. Well, that's, Fannie Mae, that's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines. And Freddie Mac. What happens with the credit report? Are they going to report you late no, or they're not going no. to report you? No, they should not report you. Okay. But you have, you, have to, you have to apply for it. You don't just, you know, not make your payment. If you, don't, just, if you just don't make your payment, then it's going to affect your credit report. But you need to... You need to contact your lender and, and apply for it and get it in writing, and then they will waive it for three months. But that's only if it's Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac owned. Mm -hmm. But most lenders, most lenders are working along with this, and especially with landlords, because if you can't get the rent, you can't make the payment. So even for landlords, uh, you know, rental properties, you might want to check into it. Which in, um for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loans, uh, are they gonna um, like add the balance to you, the you know, like the month? Yeah, they'll, they'll, 
they'll add the balance, they'll add it to the end of the loan. Okay. So they might extend the payments or they might just, I don't think they'll recast, they'll probably just add it to the end of the loan. Okay, there's no efforts to waive it and they're like. They're not gonna waive it completely, no. They're gonna add it to the mortgage. Okay, so there is no point of doing that. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, if, if it can give you a three month break, if, you, if you've had a reduction in hours, so that might be a, a value benefit that you send out to somebody that, that doesn't know. You know, check check with your lenders and and find out what their process is going to be. But to let them know that you did you know if you've lost your hours have been reduced? Did you know Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have this program? You should contact your lender. I mean, that's a value added thing that you can send out to them. It says, "Look, I'm your expert here in the in the business." Okay. Thanks. Anything else? No, well, Mary, thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll send the flyer uh, advising everybody that your next uh, seminar will be next Friday at 11 o'clock. Okay. And, and keep a positive attitude about this. I mean, it, you know, when I hear 50% of the people are not going to buy right now, that means 50% people are. So we concentrate on the people who are. And uh, please, please remember uh, our title company or whatever when you deal it, you know. Got to keep ourselves afloat here. Okay. Thank you. Go and go.